Hi everyone. We are so pumped to introduce this new video series to you. Just like you, we are working and learning from home, so thought, why not drop some knowledge on some of Sphero's favorite subjects? Today and every Friday, we'll be releasing a new video. So let's get started. I'm super excited to talk to you guys today from my home office because I'm working from home just like many of you guys are learning from home. So maybe I'll give you a quick tour before we get in. So here we have my little setup. I have a little soldering iron so that if I need to fix a robot, I can while I'm here. I have a super loud mechanical keyboard uh, so I can be super annoying to my husband. Uh, let's see, what else do we got? A nice little gallery wall. Um, yeah, and I have a little whiteboard here um, to help me kind of work through all my thoughts. But um, we're kind of doing this new series where some of us engineers and employees at Sphero kind of talk about some of the insides of our robots, specifically Rover. Um, so we kind of have a series going where we're talking about how robots, ooh, can you see that, are like the human body, which I think is kind of fun and a, a really cool um, connection that not a lot of people make. Um, so yeah, let me get set up here. Uh, so we'll be doing these web series every Friday. Uh, we'll be talking about different parts of specifically Rover here, which is our newest educational robot. It's a tank style treaded robot that, you know, you can code just like you can Bolt or Mini, uh, but you can also take it outdoors. Uh, you can do, it has a bunch of different sensors on it, which we'll kind of go through in this whole project and talk about how these sensors are similar to things in, this, in the human body. Uh, but you can also code it with the EDU app, just like you normally can, which is a lot of fun. So today I'm going to specifically talk about industrial design and how that relates to how uh, our human body and how everything you can kind of see on the human body relates to it. Uh, so the first question is like, what is industrial design? And it's basically not only like the look of the robot, but also how people interact with it. So not a lot of people think about that. Like someone has to design how this robot looks and make sure it's, you know, not ugly, let's be honest. Um, and that you guys want to buy it if you see it in the store or if you see it, um, someone else playing with it and you're like, wow, I really want to buy one of those. It looks so cool. Um, or it looks so cute. Like we got little eyes here. Um, but there's also a whole thing where you kind of have to think about how users are going to interact with your robot and make it super easy for them. We don't want to make it really complicated for someone to use a robot. Um, so in like big industrial robotics, you're thinking of like, oh, where do I put this start button? Does it make sense? Is it too close to the abort button? Where if I accidentally hit the abort button, the whole robot will shut down. You don't want that. So our industrial designer kind of thinks through all of those things as well. And when you relate to things you see on the human body, like your nose or your ears, and I'm not necessarily talking about your organs on the inside, like your heart or your brain, um, they look that way for a certain purpose, kind of like the robot looks a certain way for a certain purpose. So a good example is your nose. This guy here. It looks funny. I think it looks beautiful on everyone, uh, but there's a reason it looks like this. So if you think of it, uh, the purpose of the nose is to bring in air into your body. And what it does in the process is it warms it and it takes all the moisture from the air and puts it into your body so that you're super moisturized and your skin's really nice. Um, and the way it does that is the way it's shaped is it takes it in and it makes the air all turbulent is what you call it, where it's just like shaking around. Like when you're on an airplane and there's turbulence and it's all shaky. And what happens is it warms up the air and then it allows the sides of your nose to then pick the moisture up. So that is a really good example of why uh, something on a human body is shaped the way it is. So we can kind of talk about that with Rover here. Um, a one common thing uh, that not a lot of people know about is the roll cage. I have my pretty blue one because I'm special and I got a blue one. I think you can buy them online if you want to, to complete your set. I think there's like a blue, a green one. You can buy more of the clear ones. Um, but the purpose of the roll cage um, is to protect all your stuff you have underneath. So if you have your Raspberry Pi, if you have like little bits underneath, um, it'll help protect it. 
Because I've seen a lot of people drive this guy up against the wall and flip it. And then it'll help write it back up. Um, but another cool thing that the industrial designer thought about is that if you look at it from this profile here, like that, it still gives the spherical shape, which is what all of our other robots are. They're spherical robots. So we wanted to kind of keep the same kind of brand look of the sphere um, while also protecting all of your stuff. So it's something that also looks cool, um, but also has a purpose, kind of like your nose. Everyone's nose looks really cool. Don't be upset about your nose. So yeah, uh, let's think of another example here. I have a, a bunch written down, so bear with me. Um, yeah, so another example is what we're calling the mounting plate and the cover plate. So when you get your robot and you open it up, it should look just like this. And the idea is that when you unbox it and you open it, we want you to be like, wow, this is a really cool robot. I can just start using it right away. There's nothing intimidating about it. I don't need to put anything together like with other robots. Um, it just works. So we thought of this. We're like, all right, this solid cover plate is what we call it, um, helps give that I identity. But when you're ready to start adding on things, um, like a Raspberry Pi or your little bits and stuff, you can, I'll show you actually how to do it, push the button and pull off this plate, and then come get your mounting plate, which is this guy, and put it on there. So now it looks like a robot you can build on top of, right? You can screw you, things onto it. Um, you can tape your little bits onto it. Um, you can do a whole lot of things now that you have this plate. So you can kind of see how the robot has a much different look with this plate on versus this plate. And that's because we wanted to kind of appeal to everyone. So we wanted uh, people to not be intimidated by the robot with this plate. But we also wanted people to know that they can do lots of stuff with it, with this plate. And there is a whole lot of working together to kind of figure out what this looks like. Um, and it's not just holes willy nilly everywhere. Uh, there's a purpose. Like we have holes actually for a Raspberry Pi on here. Um, these are slots so that you can kind of adjust where you're putting things on top of it. Um, Oh, even here. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. Um, if you decide to, you want to connect to the expansion port, this tells you what um, each pin does um, so that it's not confusing. And then you hopefully don't plug it in backwards and do something harmful to your micro bit or your Raspberry Pi or your Arduino. Um, so yeah, we actually did a lot of work thinking of just what this says. Um, so that's a really cool thing that we kind of went through and talked through and has a purpose as part of the look. Um, we also worked through the snap mechanism quite a bit. We didn't want to make it too hard for kids to remove and put on, so we made a little button for it. And it should be able to hold all your stuff when you decide to drive it straight into a wall, which I've seen a lot of people do. Not that I'm upset, but, you know, that's what it, <laughs> that's why we made it the way we did. Um, another fun ID thing that not a lot of people know about is you can see, um, here's where the LEDs light up. Um, and there's some on the front and then there's a big one on the back. And I'm just wondering if anybody knows, like this shape looks super familiar. I wonder if it's ringing any bells there, but the way it was designed was kind of an ode to our EDU app and how you code. And... Um, the pill shape looks a lot like, whoop, some of these blocks here, um, for like your sensors or inputs or anything like that. And that was super purposeful. We, you know, wanted to, um, show that this is, uh, compatible with the EDU app and it exactly is. Cause we have, look, there's show, those shapes there match the shape of your LEDs. Um, so yeah, that's another little thing that goes, you know, that we thought a lot about or, um, put a lot of thought into how these shapes look and it has a purpose. 
All right, what else do we got here? Um, we can go back to another human body example, and that's your ears. So I have kind of tiny ears, and a lot of people used to talk about how tiny of ears I have, but I love them. And I hope you guys love all your ears too, because they're really cool. And they look funny, but there's a purpose for that shape. And um, the reason is that it kind of, it's shaped this way so that it, uh, when sound comes into your ear, it help, helps make it louder. Um, so that one, we understand what people are saying and we also know what direction the sound is coming from. So like I have these clocks up here, I can kind of show you. Do, do, do. It tells me what time it is in Hong Kong at any time. That's where we build all of our stuff. Um, and so I know what direction the sound is coming from because of the shape of my ears. So not only are they beautiful, but the shape of them has a purpose, um, which I feel like I keep harping on, but that's the whole point of industrial design is there's a purpose for it. Um, Ooh, another fun one is the little treads here. Um, not little treads. These treads are awesome. They help you be able to take it outdoors, um, drive it up steep inclines, stuff like that. And the dots on them are actually similar to an older robot we have um, called Ollie. And if you've seen the tires on Ollie, they have these dots. So they were keeping with the same kind of brand feel um, and just making all the robots similar. Um, but there's also a purpose and what they're there for is to help increase friction. And so what that means is it helps grip things better so that you can actually go climb up really steep inclines, less than 30 degrees, um, or go outside and take it in the grass and it helps get that grip so that you can do that. But it also is really cool looking and, um, it's better than having spikes on there, uh, which is probably very dangerous for kids, but that's okay. So yeah, um, that's kind of all I got for today. I hope I kind of helped you understand um, the industrial design behind Rover and how we kind of thought through how we can make it super cool looking, but also and but also be look like other sphere robots, even though it's so different. Um, but also everything has a purpose and making sure that the purpose is met. Um, so yeah, as I was saying, we're kind of gonna do these um, every Friday. Um, next week I'm up again. So if you don't like me, sorry. Um, if you like me, then Hey, welcome back. Um, and I'll be talking about more of the mechanical stuff, like how the motors and the gear train relate to the muscles in your body. Um, like my huge muscles I have here and yeah, so I hope you enjoy this. If you have any ideas about how robots are similar to the human body, um, hit us up on social media. We're on Twitter. We're on Instagram. We're on Facebook. We'd love to hear your ideas and uh, kind of build off that. Um, we're not on TikTok yet, so sorry, kids. Uh, but yeah, hope you guys have a great Friday and you're staying safe and healthy wherever you are. Um, and hopefully see you guys soon.